శ్రీ కొండ విశ్వేశ్వర రెడ్డి గారు థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ చైర్మన్ సార్ వీ హ్యాడ్ హ్యాడ్ సమ్ వెరీ విజనరీ లీడర్స్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ ఇయర్స్ గో డ్యూరింగ్ హిస్ టర్మ్ యాజ్ అ పిఎం ప్రైమ్ మినిస్టర్ శ్రీ అటల్ బిహార్ వాజ్పాయీజీ సెడ్ దట్ వైల్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ టెక్నాలజీ ఐటి స్టాండ్స్ ఫర్ ఇండియా టుడే బయోటెక్నాలజీ బీటి స్టాండ్స్ ఫర్ భారత్ టుమారో so i think that tomorrow has arrived and we are i think now discussing the biotechnology bill for introducing a institution in faridabad honorable minister harshwardhan himself had uh, said i believe the industry has a potential to grow like it industry over the next 10 20 years and beyond so we all agree sir not only that sir since early 2000s successive governments also have contributed and uh, we have reached this point where uh, we have a strategy of 2015 to 2020 for developing centers of excellence and now the establishment of the regional center for biotechnology as an autonomous body it's a positive step sir for the development of a country so the biotechnology will have huge positive impacts on various sectors and i think some of our colleagues covered that it has impacts on from agriculture to healthcare to pharma to vaccine food processing sanitation textiles mining various areas including sanitation and garbage management sir so the biotechnology actually converts or replaces physical chemical and mechanical process into a biotechnological process which is environmentally friendly and uses less energy and has less pollution sir many examples sir and there are some cutting edge research which is happening world over and many of them have solutions from swachh bharat to make in india to all the schemes and all the sectors the government is involved in i think one of the recent thing is uh, you know the delhi garbage is burning there's a enzyme called cellulase sir, that converts cellulose into carbohydrates and carbohydrates into biofuels like alcohol which again has to be used in petrol for blending we are at that cutting edge sir we need little more impetus there's uh, indian scientists who discovered uh, bacteria which makes uh, garbage smell like fragrance so there are many many the stone wash genes we actually washed with stones in the past and now you just put some enzymes these are the frivolous but the more important is agriculture healthcare and vaccines sir these make huge huge impacts so while we support this bill and it is required we need some clarity and some uh, we have some suggestions as well sir so clause 6 of the bill provides that the jurisdiction of the center this center would extend to other centers as well new and existing so while this center is gain autonomy do existing autonomous centers lose their autonomy to this center sir there's a scope where existing centers can be taken over by this center i think that may not be very desirable sir while this has to be encouraged other independent centers in hyderabad and tiruvananthapuram and 23 other centers also need to be encouraged sir the department of biotechnology is providing teaching programs in 71 universities across the country apart from these courses there are other centers such as national agri food biotechnology centers in mohali and uh, biotech genomics in kalyani west bengal so there is a biotech center in west bengal sir many states like andhra pradesh and telangana and chatisgarh we have our own biotechnology strategies sir now are these in conflict with this i think the center needs to take cogn cognizance of the state schemes also and uh, what the states are doing because that is very very significant sir the act is silent on the affiliation of these centers after centers after the introduction of the act the integration of the state policy my question is is this going to be a nodal center for the whole country or this is going to be just one more of the 23 centers sir i feel it should be one of the centers of excellence and should not be the nodal agency because that may imply the other centers of excellence may lose their autonomy so the clause 17 says that two members can be nominated by unesco and uh, three members of member states of unesco is there a scope it's only a question sir and uh, maybe you can answer is there a scope of losing the real autonomy that we can have that only government of india decides who the members are 
there are, I think, 14 members, so six or seven members can be UNESCO nominees. So I hope we don't lose our autonomy in this process, sir, because I think we need to look at the administrative processes. Does it require a simple majority or a two-third majority for passing any resolutions of the board? So the biotechnology, another significant, I think, Shashi Tarurji and uh, several others members raised this. The Biotechnology Regulatory Authority of India bill was introduced in 2013 and lapsed in the 15th Lok Sabha. I think that needs to be revived, sir. The bill, Enusaj set up an independent authority for biotechnology and regulatory authority of India to regulate organisms and products of modern biotechnology. Having an independent authority would solve the other issues and ensure focused and efficient research in the field. One of the other issues, sir, some of the critical areas in biotechnology are missing. Probably they are implied, but they are missing in the bill. So while the center is already engaged in education and research in the field of biodrug, discovery center, nanoscience, medicine, imaging techniques, designer crops, etc., I think it misses the important aspect of biofuels, enzymes, what I just explained, cellulose is a cutting edge technology and it's very important. And vaccine technologies are not mentioned in this bill, sir. So, earlier today, I think uh, we heard uh, Satpati ji and, uh, of course, uh, Honorable Member Satpati ji and uh, Honorable Minister Nirmala Sitaraman ji talk about cell phones here. And that is one area China is giving run for our money. But if there's one sector if, where India is giving run for the money to the Chinese, it is biotechnology, sir. And it's not just India, sir. It is specifically, we just have to take Hyderabad and Telangana, that itself is sufficient. So while the world is bracing itself on the Zika virus, we already developed, a Hyderabad company already developed a Zika virus vaccine and it's patented. In the past also, there are several other examples. I think we developed a HIV vaccine for half or one third the company. Please. Yes, that is a concern, and I'm coming to that exact concern, sir. But historically, if you see, we have been ahead of China, and even in today, very many vaccines and basic bulk drugs, we are ahead. Please and yes, you are right in the sense, one minute, one minute. You are right in the sense. Please address You are right in the sense. Sorry, sir. You are right in the sense that China is overtaking, and that's exactly our concern, sir. But as of today, if in one area we are giving run for the money to the Chinese, it is the companies in India, sir. And we have to continue to keep that edge. And this is one of the methodologies. And that concern is a valid concern, sir. The bulk drugs, uh, I think the retrovirus, 50% of the cost available globally. The H, uh, hepatitis B vaccines. There are many stories born out of Hyderabad, sir. So, in Hyderabad, we already have a policy. We have the Biotechnology Center. And recently, our Honorable Chief Minister KCR announced a pharma city. And it's very important that uh, institutions and academicians work with the industry. And that's what generates good research. While I, I, mean, while I do support the Faridabad one, sir, I think the biotechnology centers in Hyderabad, there are two of them. One is to do with fingerprinting. And other is to do with animal biotechnology. These are not taking the full advantage that Hyderabad and Telangana presents to the nation and to the world, sir. So I think we need to focus on the areas of vaccine and uh, biotechnology in the areas of vaccine and drug discovery cycle in Hyderabad, sir. And that will really add and keep up our continued cutting edge over the Chinese competition, sir. And uh, lastly, sir. I'd just like to review this thing. Uh, the program advisory committee to, uh, should have equal voting rights. It's, uh, I think, uh, the UNESCO, the funding agency, probably should not have any additional voting rights. I think that is not mentioned. Who will have the voting rights in this? And uh, reintroduction of the Biotechnology Authority Bill will be very beneficial, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.